All right, in this video, we're going to go over the different types of questions you can actually be asked about solubility curves. Um, so things that you have to calculate, okay? There's really only three types of questions that they can ask you. So type number one is just basic, can you read the graph? Type number two is do some calculations, but when it's always 100, 100 grams of water, and type number three is figure out calculations when it's not dissolved in 100 grams of water. Solubility curve practice problems, okay? So you have this lovely solubility curve that shows you a whole bunch of different compounds and how much they can, uh, how much of that substance can be dissolved in 100 grams of water at different given temperatures, okay? There are really only three types of questions that we can ask you about solubility curves, okay? So point number one, the type of question that they can ask you is the easiest, which is basically just, can you read the graph? Okay, so you can ask you basic identifying questions. That's not hard, okay? Type number two gets slightly more complicated. You might have some kind of calculation questions, but it's always with 100 grams of water. So you're not doing too complex of calculations because you're basically just looking at the graph, okay? And, and doing some minor math. Point number three, it gets slightly more confusing because we can ask you to do some calculations when it's not dissolved in 100 grams of water. Okay, so this is the most confusing type of question you can get. But they're really not that bad. So, all right, let's do type number one. Okay, can you read the graph? Okay, so. You might be asked a question, um, all right, so number one, uh, which compound is the most soluble at 20 degrees Celsius? Okay. So which compound is the most soluble at 20 degrees Celsius? That's just basically, can you look at a graph? Can you find 20 degrees Celsius? and figure out which one has the highest solubility. So go up to the very top, boom. Potassium iodide is the most soluble substance on the graph at 20 degrees Celsius. Basic, okay? You could be asked which is the least soluble at 40 degrees Celsius, okay? Same thing, you go over, you find 40 degrees Celsius, you find which one is the least soluble. Boom, SO2, okay? These ones are basic, all right? Um, you could have, if you've dissolved 100 grams of hydrochloric acid at 30 degrees Celsius, is it saturated? Is it unsaturated? Or is it super saturated? Okay, so 100 grams of hydrochloric acid at 30 degrees. It's again just reading the graph. Can you go to 30 degrees? Can you find hydrochloric acid? Here it is, right? HCl. So that line right there. And I should be able to dissolve 65 ish grams, right? In between 60 and 70. I should be able to dissolve 65 grams of hydrochloric acid at 30 degrees Celsius. However, this is saying I've dissolved 100. So I'm way up here past the hydrochloric saturation line. That would mean then it would be a super saturated solution. I've gone beyond the saturation point. I'm above the line, okay? So they could give me anything like this asking you, is this point saturated, super saturated, or unsaturated, okay? They could say, I mean, I guess like super basic. 
how many grams of KNO3, potassium nitrate, can be dissolved at 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you can basically just say, can you read the graph? Okay, so 70 degrees Celsius, go way up here, here's KNO3. You're going way up top to right there, 140. So you could dissolve 140 grams of KNO3. Easy. Okay, these are the easy questions. All right. Question types number two. Okay. Um, this would be something like if you have 20 grams of NaNO3, so sodium nitrate, dissolved in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius, how many grams can be added until it's saturated? Okay, so simple math. We're talking simple math here, right? So I have to find my NaNO3 line, right? And I don't care about the rest. So here's my NaNO3. And it says at 30 degrees Celsius, I have dissolved 20 grams. So right now I'm at this point right here. And it's saying how many more grams can I dissolve until it's saturated. So I want to get up here and I'm down here. So sodium nitrate is saturated at what, 95 grams at 30 degrees Celsius. So I can get a total of 95 grams. I already have added in 20. So subtract away the 20 grams that I start with and I can add oh, 75 more grams of NaNO3 until I hit that saturation line. Okay, easy. Worst type of question on a solubility curve is when you're not dealing with 100 grams of water. So if you had a question like, how many grams of KClO3 can be dissolved in 75 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius? Now we have an issue, right? Because I can't just look at the graph and figure it out. You actually have to do, you just set up a proportion. Okay, it's not bad. So, um, I find my KClO3, which is this guy right here. Oh no, that's NaCl. This dude is KClO3. I'll highlight it just so we can see it a little better. Okay, so KClO3 at 40 degrees Celsius is right there. So right below the 20 line, 18, 18 grams. Okay, so if I actually had uh, my potassium chlorate in 100 grams of water, I could dissolve 18 grams of it, right? It's right below 20. So you just set up a proportion. So you set up the amount of grams of your solute in your 100 grams of water. It's going to equal your grams of your solute in your new grams of water. You're just setting up a proportion, okay? So I can dissolve 18 grams of KClO3 for every 100 grams of water. That's going to equal, I don't know, how many grams of KClO3. So X in 75 grams of water. And it's just a proportion. So you set up like an equivalent fraction, 18 times 75 divided by 100. Okay. So you'd get, or, you know, just to make sure 18 times 75 is what? 1,350. And that would equal 100 grams times X. So then you divide by 100.
that should give you 13.5 grams of KCO3. Okay, you just set up a proportion. So you figure out exactly how much of the solute you, you can dissolve in 100 grams, set that up to you know the new amount you want to find in the new amount of water you're given. Okay, we'll do one more of those and we'll be done. Die. All right. Last dude. Okay. If you have 382 grams of KNO3 dissolved in 450 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius, is it saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? Okay, so you have to do the proportion again, and you have to go a step further and determine if it's going to be saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated. Okay, um, all right, so here we go. At 60 degrees Celsius, I'm looking for KNO3. Here it is, 60 degrees Celsius, come all the way up here. Perfect, it's like 110, okay? So I should be able to dissolve 110 grams of KNO3 for every 100 grams of water. I need to figure out how much should I actually be able to dissolve in, you know, 450 grams of water. You just multiply and then divide. So 450 times 110 is going to be 49500. Yikes. Okay. And that's going to equal 100 times x. Divide by 100. And you should be able to fit 495 grams of KNO3 into 450 grams of water. That wasn't the question though. It was, let's say I have actually dissolved 382 grams of KNO3 at 60 degrees Celsius in 450 grams of water. Is it saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? Well, to get saturated at 60 degrees Celsius with 450 grams of water, I am able to dissolve 495 grams. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm only at 382 grams. So I would be, you know, if this is 60 degrees Celsius, and this would be 495 grams. I haven't reached that line yet, right? I'm underneath that line. I'm at 382 grams. I'm below the saturation line. I am unsaturated. Okay, this answer would be unsaturated. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, three types of solubility curve questions. Can you just read the graph? Okay, those are the easy types of questions. Identify stuff on the graph. Number two are the easy calculations when it gives you a question with 100 grams of water. And number three are calculations when you actually have to set up a proportion to a new amount of water. Okay, good luck.